you very much for having me here because it really gives me immense pleasure always meeting students and youngsters. Not to tell my story, but you know, it rejuvenates me. And uh, being with youngsters is a kind of elixir of life for anyone. So in fact, that must be the reason all the faculty I've met so far, they all look so young and vibrant because they have been with the students all the time. In fact, it's a great initiative taken by all of you that uh, young students are being exposed to uh, a lot of people from various fields. As I saw in your list, you had a religious leader, you had a soldier, you had an artist, who knows? I mean, you have been meeting everyone and you have listened to their extraordinary stories and uh, no doubt it will have impact on the young minds and uh, sometime in your life it may you know, uh, put a memory, uh, it just comes out and uh, it may help you to resolve your issues in your life sometime or the other, that is the hope definitely. And uh, is, I see that uh, most of the people, they have been eminent people and uh, I don't know why they met me because there are Padmashris and great many people who have come and some of them have overcome the debacles and disabilities in their lives and they have rose to great heights. But when I was asked to share my life with all of you, then I started working. By God's grace, I had no disabilities in my life and uh, no extraordinary abilities either. Okay. And at the same time, I did not have any great disappointment, disappointments in my life, nor did I think that all my desires were fulfilled. Otherwise, we would not be human at all, isn't it? I'm not from any legacy family or anything, but I have a wonderful family. And I did not come from any premier institutes like all of you are. I did not go to any great institutes or I did not study abroad but still I had a decent education. And wherever I worked in my own organization, I did not become the number one or so, but I had pride in every bit of activity I did there. And I never dreamt of achieving anything great or I should become Marie Curie or I should become Sir Isaac Newton, but I know I got enough accolades and recognitions in the society, though I did not become like them. So, why am I here, I thought, and what I can convey to you? Then I thought it is most appropriate that I must convey my story to you, because I am one of those very ordinary persons. Most of us are ordinary. We don't have great difficulties, at least 90% of us. And we don't have, you know, extraordinary capabilities. We don't have extraordinary benefits. At the same time, we can go through, we can pass through, and we can make extraordinary things happen, being ordinary people. So in that context, I thought, I can share my story with all of you. Many have questioned me. I was born into a lower middle class family with four daughters in the family and only single man earning my father as it used to be. I belong to that dinosaur era. And uh, those days, how rich we felt. I don't know. How, it was a great thing the way my parents brought us up that I am ever thankful and grateful to them. Never once they made us feel that our matter of pride should ever be dependent on the new dresses or a new piece of jewelry, never. So the matter of pride which they put instilled in us was that we should do whatever we are doing in the right way and accomplish the activities we are completing to the best of our ability. I don't remember my parents even one day when I brought the progress report home, they never asked. I don't 
don't remember that I was always first rank student or no. Now I was a bad student. I used to be, okay, the first one third of the students I would be there in that. They never said one day why you did not get first rank, second rank. So I'm really blessed to have such parents, though they did not belong to any royal families or they were not any big businessmen or they did not have much money. And the wealth of culture they infused in us is something uh, you know, which made us who we are today. And all four daughters, we grew up to be very self-confident and useful to the society in our own ways and brought cheer and uh, pride in the family where we were born and the families we made later on also. Some of the things if I remember and recall, we were asked to question. Think of those days. I was born in 1960. So those days when we were young, the stories my parents told, even when they told all those idealistic stories about Dhruva or Arani or Pralat, when they were telling us the stories, how we should be, how we should mold our life, my father would never forget to tell when he tells the story of Pralat that, see, even if it is your father, you must question. You must believe in what you think is right. That's what Pralat told. So these are some of the kind of attitudes which are very important for ordinary people like us to do extraordinary things. Then came the education. The education was never mugging up or you know cramming and uh, we were always encouraged to read the subjects for understanding the subjects. And my father would always say, Sa Vidya Ya Vimuktaye. It means education is that which liberates you. Liberates you from what? Liberates you from small mindedness, which liberates you from your fears, and which can help you in taking decisions for life, and which will teach you. It's not just writing and writing, which will teach you how to live. That is the education, which is very important. So these are the kind of culture in India, in most of the middle class families, where we have been brought up. Then, that who can stop us from doing whatever we want? Loving the subjects, taking the course you want. Of course, my father wanted me to become a doctor. And uh, you know, as the time progressed, I became better and better at my studies in terms of marks and all that. Though that was not my aim. And uh, when I did my PUC, it was compulsory for science stream to take P, C, and B. We did not have so many options like you people had. And uh, having got good marks, I got admitted both in engineering and medical. And my father thought that like my elder sister, I would also prefer to become a doctor. I said, no, I want to become an engineer. So he was quite taken aback. Then he said, do what you feel is right. 